Hello and welcome to another wonderful class. As we all know, the reprints are already out there and uh, we shared a video recently where we told us how to do our reprints. Uh, so the video for the reprints, they are there on our site. And if you also get to this our website, you scroll down to our blog section. You also see the steps in getting this reprint done. So once you click on uh, blog, you see a recent post on how to do your reprint. For those of you that are still having issues doing their reprints, you should have done your reprint because that is why how you can be able to know when we are and at what time you are writing. So this is the blog section you can see here, reprint. So when you click on it, you'll get information concerning the reprint. The reprint started since yesterday and it's been ongoing. So this is the link to do the reprint. This is the very link. So click on this link and you can do your reprint. Like I said, every information that you need as a student, they are all in educateafricans.com. If you check our blog, you will see news, all the news that you need concerning your jam, they are all there, uh, especially packaged for you. So you can see it here, Reprint 2021, Joint Admission and Matriculation Board, Jam Examination, Sleep Reprinting. The procedure, how you go about it, everything is here. Okay, so you need your red number, email or phone number that you use for the registration. Any of those, once you put them in the column, then you click on print examination slip, you should be able to see your reprint. And like I said before, the earlier you know where you're writing, the earlier you know the date, the time, the better for you, the better for you, okay? So I'm gonna quickly click on all courses so that we get to what and um, so incredible because the dam we've been preparing for all this while it's already here to go there. We have to do it. I'm going to click on this chemistry and um, uh, actually what we're going to be doing today look at some important topics and uh, check out and the best way to do revision is always to get to fast questions. That's the best way. Okay, so these are the courses we've been able to cover a whole lot, a whole lot. Been able to cover a whole lot. Okay. Um, maybe I'll just go look at methods and their physical property, methods and their compound. Very important. I don't think we really did much of that. So let's see what we can see about that. Let's quickly look at metals and their compound. I think that's about the only thing we we'll know look at. Okay, more than three quarters of the elements known are metals. More than three quarters are metals. They are widely distributed. They can be found in free state or combined form with other elements. Metals are present on earth as ores. Ores are solid metals containing, solid materials containing a metal or its compound mixed with soil and other impurities. The ore may be concentrated by washing away the earthly material in a stream of water to leave behind heavier ore, as in the case of tin ore, which contains simple oxide. The way these elements are in nature depends on their reactivity. Those metals that are high in reactivity service prove very difficult to isolate. They are reactive metals such as sodium and potassium. 
and they are found as chlorides and triazocarbonate form, which are very stable compounds. Now, the moderately reactive elements such as zinc, lead, iron are found as ox or sulfide. The least reactive metals like, like gold, silver, mercury are found in uncombined state because they don't actually react. They are very unreactive and occur naturally in an uncombined state. So with this, you can see how metals exist in nature. If that metal is very reactive, you're going to see it as chloride or trials of carbonate. For example, it's for sodium and potassium. You're going to find more of sodium chloride, more of potassium, trials of carbonate, for stuff like that. But if it is moderately uh, reactive, like zinc, lead, and iron, you're going to find them mostly as oxides. And we know. In the production of zinc, lead, and iron, we talk, normally talk about their oxides, their trials of carbonate salts, and their sulfide. But when you find out that this metal is very unreactive, you're going to find it in a free state, uncombined acid salt. An example of such elements are gold, silver, and mercury. Okay. So this is very important. It's very important you know this. And uh, we're going to move forward. I want to play this uh, video a little bit. Let me see the content again. Okay. Okay, this is practically what I have on the what is here that is being explained is practically what I have here as well. Okay. So there will be no need for that. So I just explained. So basically we are we are trying to explain the origin of these metals. They are always coming from their ores, from their trials of carbonate force, from their sulfites, or they can stay on their own uncombined for very unreactive metals. Okay. And we say that more than three quarter of the elements are actually metals. So you see that there are more metals than non-metals and metalloids. So that's another thing to go home with. Okay, let's still go further. Let's look at other things on metals and uh, compounds. So that uh, we, we are rounding up, we are rounding up. So we're trying to look at uh, topics that we did not even uh, touch that much. Your jam is almost here. Saturday, that's the date it is started. Uh, it's going to go down till July 3rd. And like I said before, by now, you should can put in the right work consciously towards that time. You don't go relaxing when you know that you're going to be riding on Saturday, okay? And I've also shown us how we can, uh, how we can do what, how we can get our, our, what's it called? Okay, let's keep going down from the, let's look at sodium and this, and this compound. I've told us how we can get our printouts. Printouts are very important because th that's what you use in knowing when you are supposed to write, when you are okay, this is sodium and this compound are very reactive metal. A metal is very reactive. You cannot see it occur forming chlorides or trials of carbonate for or trials of nitrites because they are very reactive. They don't want to stay on their own. But the very unreactive ones like gold, silver, you see them in their natural form. You just have to mine and get them. But these ones, you have to get them in form of chloride, trials of carbonate for the rest. Okay, so then it's very reactive and does not occur naturally as pure metal. It occurs mainly as common salt, sodium chloride. So that's how you see most of the sodium deposits in the world, you find it occurring as sodium chloride, which you call salt, common salt, very, very important. It also occurs at deposits of sodium chloride, rock salt, sodium triazocarbonate 4, sodium triazonitrate 4, and the rest. 
Now, extraction of sodium. How do you get this sodium? How do you get it? Sodium is manufactured by the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride by using the down cell. <laughs> so Jam is going to ask you, which of the following is manufactured by using the down cell? You should know that it is sodium. The down cell is large vessel with the volume of about uh, five meters square uh, cube. It's lined inside with uh, fire bricks. The anode is a graph graphite rod, while the cathode is a steel cylinder surrounded, surrounding the anode. Sodium chloride melts as, at 801 degrees Celsius, and this would lead to loss of sodium. So calcium chloride is normally added to lower the melting point to about 600 degrees Celsius. This is a constant question in WIAC and JAM. Why is calcium chloride added? Why? In the manufacture of sodium from sodium chloride, why do you ask calcium chloride? You do that in order to lower the temperature from that very extreme end of 801 degrees Celsius to 600. Because sodium can melt at that temperature of 801. So it can lead to loss of uh, 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 what's it called? It can lead to loss of sodium. So during electrolysis, the fused sodium chloride breaks down to give metallic sodium and gaseous chloride. The sodium metal is held in the region of the cathode using iron girls cylinder and can be piped off as shown in the diagram. The chlorine is liberated at the anode and can be collected, liquefied, and stored in cylinder. Now, at the cathode, Sodium ion receive an electron each and become reduced to metallic sodium. Whereas at the anode, the uh, chlorine ion gives off electron and becomes oxidized to atomic sodium, which then pairs off to form chlorine gas. Okay. What are the physical properties? What are the physical properties of this sodium we are talking about? What are its physical properties? Number one, sodium is soft silvery white metal so how that is how you recognize sodium when you see that it's a soft silvery white metal it has a melting point of 97.5 degrees Celsius so that's the melting point and it has the boiling point of 890 degrees Celsius very important and that is what you consider that's why you added that calcium chloride in order not to take it to so much high temperature that it starts melting and boiling off and you start losing your sodium. You need your sodium. Now, it is a good conductor of heat and electricity, as most uh, metals are. Now, what are the chemical properties of sodium? Sodium tarnishes in air through the following reaction. Sodium reacts with oxygen of the air to form sodium oxide. The oxide normally absorbs water from the air to form sodium hydroxide. And sodium hydroxide reacts with carbon four oxide in the air to form sodium triosocarbonate four and water. Because of these reactions, sodium metal is kept in oil to prevent it from tarnishing. So why do you keep sodium oxide in oil? Uh, why do you keep sodium in uh, sodium metal in oil? Because you don't want it to tarnish because it can easily oxidize going down. Now, when sodium is heated in air or oxygen, it burns with a brilliant yellow flame to form sodium peroxide. Okay. So whenever you heat sodium, we see sodium tarnishes in air because it's very reactive with uh, uh, oxygen. Then secondly, when you heat it in air or oxygen, it burns with a brilliant yellow flame to form sodium peroxide. Now, sodium also reacts with ammonia to form sodamide and liberate hydrogen in the process. So, very importantly, that metal that when heated with oxygen or air forms with a brilliant yellow flame is known as sodium techno. Okay, that's it about sodium. That's it about sodium metals and their compound. That's what we're looking at metals and their compounds. Okay, so let's look at aluminum and its compounds. 
aluminum and its compound. Okay, let's look at that. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. So our exams are starting on Saturday. Very important for me to prepare. Compounds of aluminum will have the following compound. Aluminum oxide, this is a white solid. It is prepared by strongly heating aluminum hydroxide. Aluminum oxide, of course, naturally has four sides. So you can get aluminum from aluminum oxide, also known as four sides. That's one of the also. Aluminium. Second one is what we call aluminium chloride. Aluminium chloride is the covalent in nature. It's prepared by passing dry chlorine, overheated aluminium. Aluminium chloride readily sublimes, fumes in moist air, and readily hydrolyzed by water. Aluminium oxide is a dimers. These are two molecules joined together. Okay? And we also have aluminium tetraodosulfate. Six aluminum tetrasulfate six is prepared by the action of hot concentrated tetrasulfate six acid on aluminum oxide. Aluminum tetrasulfate six is moderately soluble in water. It combines with other tetrasulfate six salts to form double salts known as alum, and this is used in the treatment of water and sewage, and also for perfumes. Very important use for these aluminum. Uh, compound known as aluminum tetrasulfate. These, uh, these formulas are not actually right as, as they are here. Yeah? So, want to uh, make sure you have them right. You have to play this video and see the way they are written properly. Now, chemical properties of aluminum action with air. Aluminum bonds in air at high temperature to form oxide and nitride. So, they react with oxygen. Form oxide and nitride. The one in there, that's uh, oxygen and nitrogen component of the reaction with non-metals on heating. Aluminium combines directly with non-metals like halogen. Halogens store for nitrogen, phosphorus, and carbon with evolution of heat. Reaction with alkalis. Aluminium reacts with both sodium and potassium hydroxide solution, giving hydrogen gas and soluble tetrahydrosoaluminum. And we have reaction with ion three oxide. Here, yeah, aluminium reacts with uh, aluminium reduces ion three oxide to molten ion. Reaction is used in the thermic process and gives out great deal of energy. This is a reducing property of aluminium. This is the basis of thermite process and is used to weld ion. Okay, it's used in welding. Very important. Physical properties of aluminium. How do you recognize aluminium when you see one? Aluminium is a silvery white metal, which is comparatively soft, though not as soft as sodium that we looked at. It is ductile and malleable and possess a moderate tensile strength. So aluminium is ductile and malleable. It is a good conductor of heat and energy, just like sodium is. That's a metal point of six. 59 degrees Celsius, quite higher than that of sodium. And it has a boiling point of 2056 uh, degrees Celsius, quite higher than that of sodium as well. The specific gravity of aluminum is 2.7. Okay, let's continue moving forward. Let's continue moving forward. So you can see that we have to check out a couple of some uh, metals. I need this uses of aluminium. Let me check it out. Let's see whether we can still do copper before we close. Okay, uses of aluminium, very important. Aluminium is used in making alloys like duralumin that has a combination of uh, the following metal uh, elements aluminium, copper, magnesium, and manganese. Okay. So that forms duralumin. That's an alloy. Alloy is a, just a combination of metals combining their best qualities to give you what you want. Aluminium bronze, consisting of copper and aluminium. Okay. And they are used for ships, spacecraft, and moving parts of machine, as well as in building airplanes, because they are stronger and harder than pure aluminium, but still light and resistant to corrosion. Aluminium is used in cooking utensils, such as pots, saucepan, kettles. You find out that most things you use in your house are those wares are actually made from aluminium. 
your pot kettles because it is cheap, light, and good conductor. So it conducts electricity very easy. It is cheap and it is light. Now, aluminum is used in making overhead electrical cables because it is light and has good electrical conductivity. The aluminum foils are used for packaging. We all know that. We all know that. We all know that aluminum foils are used for packaging and they are used for making overhead electrical cables. Aluminum cables. Light and uh, conductive electricity. Okay. So lastly for today, we are going to look at, uh, let's look at copper. Copper and its compound. It's also very important. Yeah. So let's look at copper and its compound. Let's round off copper and its compound. Let's look at copper. Sorry. So let's look at this copper and its compound. Let's round off metals and its compound with that. Okay. So I believe we are we are ready. We are ready for the exams. Almost here. Okay, copper and its compound. Let's look at them. Copper is one of the first metals discovered. It's one of the first metal that is discovered and used by man. It's a stable metal readily obtained from its compound. Copper ores are widely found around the world. The main ores are copper. Pirates, copper pirates, see you. See you, F E S two. We have the Malachites, see you, see you. We have the uh, charcoalites and the coprites. So these are the various uh, ores of copper from where you can get copper. Now look at the physical properties of copper. Copper is a heavy reddish, heavy reddish. I mean, okay. so copper is a uh, heavy reddish brown. Okay. So copper is a very uh, heavy, is a heavy reddish brown metal. It has a density of 8.95 uh, gram uh, centimeter cube. That's percent, gram percent. Yeah, thank you very much. Now it is very malleable and ductile. So just like we have aluminum being malleable and ductile, copper is also malleable and ductile. It is a good conductor of heat and electricity. That's why you have copper wires. You can use copper to do wires. It's very, very effective conductor of heat and electricity. It has high melting points. You see that the melting point of copper is even higher than that of aluminum. And you, you already looked at sodium and we found out that that of sodium is, that of aluminum is higher than that of sodium. Now it has high melting points of 1,008. 83 degrees Celsius. It has a boiling point of 2,300 degrees Celsius. It also forms alloys very readily. It forms alloy very, very easily. So that is, uh, so those are some of the uh, 
physical component, uh, uh, what's it called? Physical properties of, of uh, copper. Now, chemical properties of copper reaction with air. It is resistant to pure dry air, but over a long period of time, it is a most impure, in a most green, uh, basically. Copper two tetrahedral of sulfate for heating in air or oxygen. So once you heat it in air or oxygen, it can be converted to copper two tetrahedral of sulfate six. I also have effects of uh, acid. Copper is lower than hydrogen in the electrochemical series, hence it is not capable of uh, displacing hydrogen from dilute acid. It is, however, attacked by oxidizing agents like uh, triose nitrate, five acid, and tetrahedral sulfate. Six acid. Now, extraction of copper, uh, getting it from copper pyrite, which is one of the oils, the oil usually used for the extraction of copper. And it involves three stages the concentration of the oil to remove impurities. Uh, this is done first by crushing the oil and then mixing with water, a frothing agent such as vegetable oil is then added, and air is blown through the mixture. Uh, the particles of copper are floated in the fraud while the early materials and waste uh, rocks or rock sink. The next stage will be the roasting of the oil in a limited supply of air to oxidize the iron and some of the sulfur in the oil to iron two oxide and sulfur oxide respectively. And so four oxide gas escapes from the top of the funnel and two oxide also removed by heating the, in the absence of air with silicon oxide, which is added to it in the corners. Now, ion three tries to silicate for its form as a slag, which blows on top of the molten copper one so far, and it's removed. The copper produced is between 98 to 99% pure. In a case where pure copper is required, the impure copper produced will be purified by using electrolytic methods. So take note, that's how you can prepare, refine pure copper. Uh, the impure copper forms the pure. I don't know what is there. Why the strip of pure? Uh, well, I have to take that off. Don't want to make a mistake. Okay. So that's about copper. I still have more to Okay. Impure of the forms the anode of the electrolytic. So why the strip of pure copper forms the cathode? Okay. Now the electrolyte electrolyzed is copper four tetrahedral of surface, six solution. Now during the electrolysis, the metallic copper ionizes to form copper ions, which which moves to the cathode where they accept the electron and become the processor, pure copper metal. Okay. Now, preparation of copper two tetrahedral four, which is another very sulfate uh, six. There are different ways of preparing copper two tetrahedral six salts. It can be prepared by the addition of copper tonnage with concentrated tetrahedral sulfate six acid. Okay. I think this is about enough for this. I don't know whether we have one. Okay, zinc and its compound are the last one. Zinc occurs naturally as zinc lead or zinc sulfide and calamine. That is zinc does not occur freely in the chest lustrous metal. It is ductile and malleable between 150 to uh, 200 degrees Celsius. Its specific gravity uh, or relative density is 7.1. It melts at 419 degrees Celsius and boils at 910 degrees Celsius. It's also a good conductor of heat and energy. The other is chemical properties. We have reaction with air and then reaction with acid, okay? So that's like a summary of all the metals and their compound. So if we have time, we'll also do the same for non-metals and its compound the next time we meet.
But until then, make sure you're reading, make sure you're, uh, make sure you printed your, what's it called, your, your, you've done your reprint so that you know where you're writing and when you're writing. Okay, I'm wishing you guys good luck as you write your exam. Uh, make sure you continue practicing before the day you have. Jika, when are you writing your, which day are you writing your? This Saturday. Have you text your? Wow. I have so many students writing this Saturday, like, until we are checking in my place, like, Saturday night. I hope, are you in the first batch or towards the afternoon? First batch. Wow. Wow. But it's okay. Once you write it, you know you've written it once and for all. It's always good. So that you can focus your energy on other things like your wife and every other thing. Okay. So it's okay. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. 